The news coming from Texas has been inescapable, and rightfully so, as the state has found some pretty dastardly workarounds to existing laws in regards to abortion services. The debate surrounding abortion rights in the United States has been pretty tumultuous for as far back as most of us can remember, and unfortunately, can sometimes turn deadly. One such tragedy happened right here in the Buffalo Bills backyard. I'm Think So Joe, this is Things You Might Not Know, and today I'll be covering the murder of Dr. Barnett Slepian. Doxing, a term that we have all heard or read multiple times in 2021, is defined as using internet sleuthing to reveal previously private or sensitive information about a particular individual to the general public. There are plenty of reasons given by those doing the doxing as to why this information is being revealed, some of which have been extremely useful, while others have caused catastrophe. Two of the more common reasons for this action are extortion and online shaming. The latter of those two has led to quite a few problems for quite a few people, deserving or not. On one end of the online shaming spectrum of doxing is calling out those who do wrong to others publicly. We have seen quite a bit of this on both TikTok and Twitter as of late, with the rise of unfair practices by small businesses, landlords, and politicians. On the other end of that same shaming spectrum is the type of doxing that leads to not only threats, but the actual injury or possible death of human beings, usually because of the person's beliefs or how they live. An example of this would be the release of the home address and contact information of doctors, nurses, and other employees of abortion clinics across the United States. Take all the time you need to draw a picture in your head of the type of person that would involve themselves in this type of vigilante act. One such provider of this life-saving treatment for those of us who have the ability to get pregnant was Dr. Barnett Abba Slepian. Born in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and raised in Rochester, New York, Dr. Slepian originally attended and graduated from the University of Denver with a degree in zoology. He later attended the Universidad Autónoma de Guadalajara Medical School in 1978. Eventually, Barnett Slepian would relocate to Amherst, New York, a suburb of Buffalo. By the late 1990s, Dr. Slepian not only worked in the clinic at Buffalo Women's Services, but also had a private practice performing OBGYN services in Amherst. Unbeknownst to the ill-fated doctor, his name appeared on an online list of healthcare providers which was later described as a virtual hit list of doctors who carry out abortions. Dr. Slepian and his family eventually became aware of the online activities of the so-called anti-abortion activists due to an uptick in threats towards the doctor, but were not completely aware of how severe the situation was. Before I get too deep into this, are you aware of something that you wish more people would talk about? Be sure to drop that in the comments section, and maybe your suggestion will end up as a new episode of Things You Might Not Know. From 1995 through 1997, there had been several shootings of abortion providers, all believed to have been perpetrated by the same person or group. Three doctors in Canada, Hugh Short, Garson Romalis, and Jack Feynman, plus an unidentified doctor just outside of Rochester, New York, had all been shot at sniper style while in their homes or offices. Luckily, all three of them survived, even though a couple of them had been badly wounded. Early in the afternoon, on October 23, 1998, Barnett Slepian's wife Lynn reported a fresh batch of threats that had been made against the doctor to the local police. Later that same evening, around 10 p.m., the family returned from synagogue where they were attending a memorial service for Dr. Slepian's late father. As Barnett, Lynn, and their son chatted in the kitchen of their home, a single gunshot came through the window and hit the doctor, shattering his spine and tearing his aorta. After the bullet passed through the doctor, it narrowly missed his son's head. Dr. Slepian died at the hospital two hours later. Within hours of his murder, Barnett Slepian's name was crossed off that online hit list I mentioned earlier. The days following the deadly shooting, anti-abortion groups from all corners of North America converged at clinics in both Buffalo and Rochester to stage protests. These protests were decried by some on both sides of the abortion debate as they feared a further escalation of violence. Unfortunately for the rest of us, the same type of idiots we have now existed back in 1998, and the more extreme pro-lifers came out against any calls for non-violence. 
One such man of God was the infamous moron Flip Benham from the group Operation Rescue. Benham was quoted as suggesting that if abortion was not outlawed, we are in store for more bloodshed in the streets, the likes of which will sicken even the sturdiest among us. The man responsible for the murder of Dr. Barnett Slepian was California resident James Charles Kopp. A member of the militant Roman Catholic anti-abortion group the Lambs of Christ, Kopp was well known within religious terrorist circles, earning the nickname Atomic Dog. It took a while for the FBI to catch up with Kopp after the murder of Dr. Slepian as he had fled to Mexico immediately after, eventually ending up in France via Ireland. Kopp was arrested in France in 2001 and extradited to the US for trial. The trial of James Kopp started in March 2003, where he waived his right to trial by jury. Kopp confessed to shooting Slepian, but claimed that he only intended to wound the physician. He was ultimately found guilty of second-degree murder and was given a sentence of 25 to life. The New York State Attorney General and Erie County District Attorney did intend to pursue the death penalty in this case, but the extradition agreement with France's government blocked them from doing so. In 2007, James Kopp attempted to appeal the original decisions, stating that he believed the killing of Barnett Slepian was not murder, as it wasn't malicious or premeditated. In April 2006, Kopp's conviction and sentence were upheld. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Things You Might Not Know! If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like and a comment down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you can see a playlist of Things You Might Not Know videos over here. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time!